India's Boss Operating System, fully named Bharat Operating System Solutions, gets hyped up by the government as a beacon of technological independence, supposedly capable of vaulting India into the ranks of tech superpowers overnight. Reality, however, paints a grim picture. This system can't even break out globally because locals barely bother to boot it up. Official stats show its user penetration is laughably low, rarely spotted even in government offices. An operating system with no ecosystem and no muscle. So how's it supposed to take on the world's tech giants? Today, let's dive into this Bharat Empire dream and figure out if it's a breakthrough or just a self-delusional fantasy. Peeling back the layers of this so-called Indian pride. Boss sounds tough with its name alone. Yet at its core, it's just a Debian-based Linux variant. Slapped with an India-made label and pitched as the next big thing in operating systems. Its interface looks like it time-traveled from the last century. Buttons strewn about in chaos. And compatibility issues pile up so high you'd tear your hair out. Basic hardware support flops too. Hook up a new printer or graphics card. And you're often staring at a blank screen. Windows boasts a rich ecosystem. Serving as the go-to production infrastructure. Mac OS caters to tech-savvy elites. And even Ubuntu thrives with a buzzing community. Leaving boss in the dust by miles. The Indian government swears it's homegrown innovation. But anyone with eyes can see it's just open source code with a new skin. Stamped with the Bharat Empire logo. A technical masterpiece? Hardly. It's more like an ignored relic that can't even nail down basic user experience. The absurdity peaks with Boss's update pace. Crawling along like an ox cart. Its features so useless that regular users don't even bother griping. Check its official site. And the latest version dates back years. With security patches nowhere in sight. The Indian government brims with confidence. Yet their own agencies ditch it. Quietly reverting to Windows. You won't find boss on computers in schools or hospitals either. If it's so great, why can't it hold on to its own people? Calling it a relic is generous. Relics at least have collector value, while boss just gathers dust in a corner. A clumsy footnote to Bharat Empire's tech ambitions. Now let's shift focus to how China handles operating systems. They've got Lungsin's homegrown instruction set paired with DPIN. Plus Huawei's Harmony OS charging ahead, building a full ecosystem from chips to software. Lungsin and DPIN aren't some lab experiment anymore. They're a solid, practical system, running WPS, WeChat, and Douyin smoothly, meeting daily needs without a hitch, even gaining traction in government offices. Huawei's Harmony OS is even bolder, spanning billions of devices. Set to ship pre-installed on phones by 2025, with a PC version gearing up too. Apps like WeChat and Alipay boost its clout, and market buzz shows user satisfaction climbing fast. China's success rests on a massive market foundation. Brands like Lenovo and Xiaomi churn out PCs and phones that dominate global shipments. 2023 numbers peg China's smartphone market at nearly a third of the world's total with spending power to match, giving native operating systems a huge runway. The government doubles down, rolling out policies to push self-reliance, turning it into more than just talk. Lungsin, Huawei, and WPS are raking in profits, proving these systems don't just survive, they thrive. On the tech front, Huawei's chip design leads the pack. SMIC's manufacturing keeps climbing and national backing helps smash through foreign barriers, fueling a booming ecosystem that's pulling in more developers by the day. Over in the Bharat Empire, Boss sits in stark contrast. No homegrown chips, no robust software ecosystem, and even if it shakes off open-source reliance, it's still stuck begging for American apps. WPS? Nope. WeChat? Nada. Doin? Forget it. India can't even muster decent local substitutes. The country's tech dream is like a sandcastle on the beach. Tall and proud until the waves hit. Developer support is practically zilch. 
Search online for boss guides, and you'll wade through pages of complaints. China builds on solid ground, while the Barrett Empire props itself up with illusions. Don't the boss developers see the gap? Maybe they do, but the show must go on for the sake of appearances. India's tech scene doesn't fare much better. BOSS comes from the Center for Development of Advanced Computing, or CDAC, where progress drags so slowly you'd think they're coding with abacuses, and update logs barely fill a page yearly, with bug fixes perpetually delayed. The Bharat Empire touts India-made slogans, acting like BOSS will stun the world on launch. Reality bites hard though. Government offices sneak back to windows. And a stroll through any public institution in India reveals screens flashing familiar Windows layouts. Not their national pride. Makes you wonder who this tech independence is really for. The issues run deeper. India's tech talent flocks to Silicon Valley, shining at Google and Microsoft, leaving behind a crew that can't carry the innovation torch. The Bharat Empire boasts its huge population and endless potential. But the real workers have bolted, with stats showing tens of thousands of IT pros heading abroad annually, draining the local talent pool dry. Those left wrestle with exams and outsourcing gigs, hardly the mindset for groundbreaking R&D. India's government isn't helping, obsessed with grandstanding, trumpeting superpower visions while botching the follow-through. Boss gets hyped to the skies, but in practice, no decent app store leaving users to fumble through manual installs. Bharat Empire's businesses disappoint too, crippled by a lack of boldness that's practically a tradition. They're content with outsourcing and grunt work, pocketing modest wages without a glance at the tech frontier. India's IT sector plays errand boy to global firms, banking on cheap labor instead of crafting its own ecosystem. The country dreams a single boss can turn the tide. Forgetting that operating systems need chips, software, and users working in sync. But India? No chips to build. No software to grow. And users who won't touch it. Globally, iOS and Android reign supreme. While Boss doesn't even rate as a sidekick. Turning into a punchline on tech forums where it's mocked as a cautionary tale. Boss might sound commanding. But it's just an empty shell of India's tech aspirations. The rhetoric roars loud, yet the substance falls flat. China, with Lungsin to Harmony OS, leans on shipments, markets, and profits to carve a real path of innovation. The Bard Empire? Talent's gone. The governments all bluster. Businesses won't budge. And boss ends up an orphan nobody wants. India barely tries to push it. Promo videos brim with vague promises, but lack any real use cases. Why waste time fiddling with boss when Indian folks could just grab Ubuntu? It's free. It works. And it beats clinging to a Bharat Empire-made mirage. Tech independence isn't built on daydreams. And boss proves one thing. Brag all you want. Just don't fool yourself.